This story is written by me, Jeannie, my cousin and friend, Elise, and our puppy. Elise and I are both eight, but puppy is just very old. We each took in turns writing and reading a page. We sent them to Uncle Luke, who made us into a little video. Elise done a front cover, and I am reading this. Here is the story. Hope you like it. They once were the family of tiny people that lived in a tree. There was a daddy that was called Richard and a mummy that was called Emily and their little girl who was called Ayati. They were a happy little family who lived in the woods. Ayati was a happy girl who played often with the squirrels. She had blonde hair and blue eyes and a turquoise dress and long boots. Ariete slid down the tree trunk that belonged to her house she lived in. She was playing with her best friend squirrels called Lily, Molly and Squeaky. They were picking flowers for each other. A big flock of birds flew over and sang a beautiful song. But the song woke up Gary the badger. He said, hey, who woke me up? Sorry, Gary, said Ariete. We were just having a bit of fun. We'll just move somewhere else. Gary the Badger had a raggy jacket, a pointy nose and very sharp claws. He was the laziest animal in the forest. Oh, bother, 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 said Gary in a very grumbly voice. Waking up always makes me feel hungry. And now I can't decide whether to go back to sleep or to go and look for some food. Oh, what a nuisance. And then he pushed a few leaves around with his nose and he fell fast asleep again. But suddenly there was another rumbly, grumbly sound. Ariete, Lily, Molly and Squeaky all looked at each other and then they looked at Gary. Gary was fast asleep. So what was it? Rumble, grumble, rumble, grumble. The noise was getting louder and louder. What on earth could it be? Oh no! And she went back to her house. She climbed on the top of it and she saw a giant of the forest. Oh no! Oh no! cried Ayrty. She went to her house and her parents said, Where have you been? Mm. She grumbled, trying to find an excuse. Because if you are an elf, as Ayrty and you and her parents, you are not allowed to go in the forest. Finally, she said, I was just at the top of the tree playing with the screw and she hadn't finished her phrase that the house was starting to move her her father cried i have built a sacred cave i had to be prepared they quickly ran after richard in the cave all was dark the squirrels were still playing but gary was safe under the pile of leaves of course because he was sleeping the squirrels suddenly stopped playing and dropped the flowers and rushed towards their home. They knew what to do. There was a big crash, bang, clinkety clonk. They found what they were looking for. It was a, you'll find out later. Then they ran towards the giant and pushed a big button. No, no, it didn't work. It was the wrong button. Boom, they finally done it right. The giant shrunk tiny to the size of Ariete. He just wanted to be friends, but was the forest still dangerous? The giant's name, by the way, was Boo. The squirrels were so excited to find that Boo really just wanted to be a friend, and they ran up the tree to tell Ariete. But where was she? They had never been told about Richard's secret hiding place and they had no idea where she was. Meanwhile, 
Arietti, Richard and Emily were down in the very dark cave. They had heard the boom of the squirrel's magic machine and thought it must be Boo doing something awful. They were very frightened and stayed very quiet, huddled together. Richard lighted a candle and gave one to Arietti and to her mother. Arietti started to explore the cave. She found a bottle. On the bottle she read, Fairy's Blood, 1020 AD. Then she found on another shelf in a box this time, a green tail. And on the box she read, Dragon's Tail. Arietti was very afraid and intrigued by this place. Meanwhile, Emily and Richard unwrapped the food they had taken to eat. They had a block of cheese, some fruit, chicken, a bottle of water, a plate and some cutlery. Richard called Arietti to come to eat, but they only ate, ate the fruit. Up above ground, the squirrels were worried. Bruce said he saw them go underground. Molly immediately went in a flash. It was only three seconds later when she came back with a metal detector. She knew Richard always wore a metal green belt. Beep, 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 went the metal detector. They're down there, shouted Mr. Boo, and immediately he started to dig at the ground with his hands. But just then, Mr. Bat came flying out from a hole in the tree trunk. Don't be silly, he said. If you want to find Arietti, all you have to do is push on this dead branch. They looked in amazement as Mr. Bat flew off. Boo immediately ran to the tree and pushed on the dead branch. As they watched, a strange little door creaked open amongst the gnarled roots of the tree. Down, down, Boo fell. Bump! He landed on the bottom of the cave. When he got up, he saw a ladder up to the small door. Who, who are you? asked Arietti. Are you the giant? said Emily. But you've shrunk, said Richard. When Boo saw their food, he rushed over and gobbled all of it up. Soon the squirrels hopped in the hole. The squirrels explained what ha had happened and that Boo just wanted to be friends. So they went up the ladder. They decided to have a party and invite some woodland friends. They invited the elves next door, the fairies, the family and Boo, obviously. The guests got in and the party began. Ariete and Boo were next to each other. Ariete said, Psst! Boo looked at her. What is the matter? Look what I have got in my pocket. Boo looked and saw the fairy's blood and the dragon's tail. Let's go in my room and make a potion. The squirrels know it already and they want to try. So they went into the room and made the, the potion and gave it to the squirrels. The squirrels turned immediately and became elves. Oh, thank you so much for, for saving us from the spell. They danced and danced and danced in a big circle, all holding hands. At last they were all together again, all their rightful selves in the kingdom of the little people. It seemed that all their adventures might be over. But were they? <laughs>